Hello and welcome to another video on Microsoft Fabric. And in today's video, we will continue our journey of Python on Notebook. And today we would like to execute an algorithm where we want to create clusters on our data. Now, this is might not be the best data to do that, but we want to learn how to execute a machine learning algorithm and how to make it part of our table. So that is the most important thing. So I wanted to make it as a part of my table and I want to analyze that data. So that's the basic objective out here. So if I create colors clusters, so I would like to see those clusters in Power BI. I just don't want to leave them there on the notebook. So I'm going to take you through that. And today we are going to take help of a library known as scikit-learn, which is going to give us K means clustering algorithm. K means clustering algorithm allow us to create cluster by giving the number and we can give a set of parameters. Now to do this easily, I have asked Mr. Chat GPT to give me a code which can do the clustering divided into five cluster using three columns and append it back to the same data set. So he, Mr. Chat GPT has done a good job and I'm going to use that. So you can also do it. I know these things for quite some time, but yes, just for a quick refresher, I used it. Fine. So let's go to the app.powerbi.com, basically our app fabric app now. And in the fabric app, I already have one data set which I was using in the previous uh, video where I have the uh, data which I can use for machine learning. So I'm going to go to my lake house and in my lake house, I'm going to use the uh, Spark Notebook lake house. And in the Spark Notebook lake house, I have few files. And one of the files which I have is retail1.csv. I'm going to read this file and I will learn mach run machine learning algorithm on that put it back in the CSV format or in table format. So this is what we are going to try today. So let's open a new workbook for that. And it's creating a workbook. So first time it doesn't ask for a name. We can just click and check. Does it allow us to change the name? So we can say uh, cluster clustering spark. And I think you have to click outside. No, enter is not working. Clicking on uh, outside is not. Working. You have to click the, on the name again, original name again. And then it will work. So what is the code that uh, you need? So first of all, I need to include pandas. First thing which we need to do is we need to import pandas. So for that, we are going to use import pandas as pd. So this is the command to import the pandas into the current uh, session or the current code. Now this is something the pop-up keep on coming uh, because of external changes. I, I think there is some uh, bug right now. So what I'm going to do is I already written some code from there. I'm going to bring in. So the next thing I wanted to have is I want to use the K means algorithm from scikit-learn and I don't want to import the complete scikit-learn library uh, from the scikit-learn clustered. I just want to import the K mean clustering algorithm. K mean clustering algorithm, I can give number of clusters and that for that many clusters, I can get the data classified clustered into few clusters. But I, what I need is the file name uh, for the, uh, this one. So I need to read the file now, uh, into, a uh, pandas data frame. So to read that file into pandas data frame, I need the complete path. I can even use the relative path. So what I'm going to do is I will go back to my uh, file in lake house on another tab and then I'll go to the properties and will find out what is my path. And once I get that path, I will copy that and I will use this path into my code. So what you see ABFS path, the last one is the correct one, which you have to use. And now what we are going to do is we are going to use the data, uh, P, the PD dot read CSV, and we will read it into a data frame, which we will call as data. 
then uh, I'm just comparing it by pasting it uh, below that, you know, they look so similar. Now I'm going to display the data also for you. So let me run it. We have a run all option there and we have a run option at the individual right now, because I only have one code, I can do the run all, but I will do run. I, what I've also done is by before running it, I just added another portion of the code so that once it is run, I can add it into the another snippet. I can add the code. So the code is running now, this is the first time. So it's going to start the spark engine also. And you will see that once it is started, it will have a stop session button also enabled. So now we, the start park session has started and we are able to get the data displayed. Now the important thing uh, which we have to note down that we have all the columns, uh, which we, uh, which we have in the file and I've read the CSV file, which I previously loaded as, so I'm not getting any new file this time around. Now, next step is to follow the k-means algorithm. So in the k-means algorithm, we have to give the number of clusters and then we have to run that k-means algorithm. We will get those clusters and those clusters we need to append back to our file. So now what I've done is I asked Mr. Chat GPT to give me a code so that I can do clustering on three columns. So it has given me three columns and those three column, it has given me generic three columns. So I have chosen unit price, discount percentage and unit cost three column, which I just validated from above also. These are the three columns which I actually wanted to do clustering. And the reason I have not taken quantity because quantity, I only have one, two and three because of that reason I did not choose. Now next step is X dot data and columns for clustering. So I'm creating another data frame, which is smaller version of this one where I'm going to do this clustering. Then I'll say K means equal to K mean and cluster equal to five. So I'm telling K means the K means function, which is basically uh, going to run this algorithm to have create the five clusters for me. And these five clusters will be created for the columns, which I have selected above unit price, discount percentage and unit cost. Now K means uh, with the another variable is going to get th that uh, uh, information from the K means and then I'm going to run K means dot fit X. Now this process of two line is going to give me the my K means clustering and then I will get labels underscore in the K means and that label underscore I'm going to add into my data, the original data frame data as a cluster. So what is happening here is remember that, you know, I don't want to separate it out from my data. So I'm actually adding it back to my cluster. And if I display this data, I should get my clusters. The five clusters from zero to four should be available in the, my data frame itself. So I am executing this code. This time it will not start the uh, spark engine. It's already started. You can see the stop session button, button coming on the top. And now it has started executing and now the result has also come in. I'll scroll down and I'll show you that I would like to see that cluster uh, column coming in into the same data frame. So you can see now the cluster has come and it has value like zero to four. And when I scroll down, you will also see three at some place. And further, we are going to analyze this data in power BI that will help us in finding out that yes, we have all the clusters and how the distribution of cluster, we don't want a uniform distribution of cluster so that we have to test it on power BI. There are commands in Python to, you know, analyze this data, but we are power BI guys, isn't it? So we are going to do that. Now, what we are going to do here is we need to write down this back to the file. So I just hover over the uh, space below and I got the code button and I press the plus one so that I get an, another snippet for the code. And inside that one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a code so that I can write this file back to my lake house. Now I can write down as a lake house, as a CSV file first and show you there is a little bit of challenge here, which has come after I created this data frame. Once I show that challenge, then the second step I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as the table, uh, which you might have already learned from my last video. So let me execute this. I've changed the file name to retail CLT six so that we don't get confused with the names, but just remember this time we are saving with six. 
So once I run this, it should save the file in the same lake house and I should be able to see that as a CSV file. Now for CSV, we do have some kind of preview which is available and which will tell us what kind of, uh, you know, error I'm getting and I'll tell you how to correct that also. So let's look at the CLU6 after refreshing. Uh, so we got the CLU6 here, not as a table, we got as a file and that's why on the right hand side we are looking. And you can see the first uh, column name is something which is not correct and unnamed zero space is there. So only thing which we have to do is we have to remove the first column and rest of the things will fall in place automatically. This is the problem with this uh, data frame what we have created. So I am going to now write down a, a code. So I'll add another code snippet. You just hover over in the space just after the snippet, code snippet and then you'll get it. So now I got another one and here I'm going to write down a code. So the code I got uh, from the internet, I think I got few versions and finally this is the version which work out few of the version where we simply take out the column zero or the first two column did not work out well for me. So this Dell data data dot column zero is something which worked out for me. So I'm running this and I'm again displaying the data and now you can see index order ID order date item etc is coming correctly. And that's now you understood the reason why I am deleting uh, one particular column from the my data. So now my data seems right. Now the time has come that I should write it as a table. Now, if you remember in the last class, we found out that, you know, this is a Python data frame and we cannot simply write it back as a table. We need a spark data frame. And to convert into to the Spark data frame, I shown you a code spark dot create data frame. You give a Python data frame and it will convert it into a Spark data frame. DF one is going to be a Spark data frame and Spark data frame is something which we can write down in a Delta Parquet format back into our lake house. And I'm writing down in the append mode. You can also write it down in the overwrite mode. Now, what does append means is next time if I come and execute this code, I'll get double the data. So this is something I need to be careful when I'm choosing the mode. Now I'm running this code and uh, once this is completed, I'm expecting to see a table into my lake house. And it's the spark job which is running and spark might not have only one job. You are giving two command doesn't mean there are only two commands. There could be many other further jobs which are there and those jobs will get executed and we will get the desired results. As you can see, there are at least four jobs and inside that there could be further sub jobs, which you can also see. Now for the first one, you see eight of eight succeeded. Now, if I open the 11 number or 10 number, you may see further stages are there. So these are number of stages which are there. So don't just think that, you know, simple jobs are getting executed. Spark is a, you know, really rich system, which can, you know, execute it on multiple CPUs and all those it can do. It can give you the scale. Now let's open this file here and I, now you can see that my data is in available as a table and now I should be able to analyze it either via SQL or Power BI. So in a lake house, once the table is available, it is also available for the analysis in Power BI and as well as in the SQL. So I need to go in the right top and choose the SQL endpoint and come to my SQL endpoint UIs where I will be able to write down a select statement and will be able to run my queries. So I typically prefer that select 100 so that it gives me all the column name and table name and then I can modify. This is something those who are from the SQL world knows that, you know, we generate one query, it gives us all the column and then we modify like I need cluster and I need the count of the cluster to showcase you that, okay, these are non homogeneous clusters and the code has done a good job. Now we can't say good or bad right now because we have not analyzed it properly, but we are just showing you how can you use that algorithm. So what a query I'm trying to create here is basically select cluster comma count star. And because I have used one aggregated and one non aggregated, if I don't give group by then it will error out. So I need to give a group by because one of the column doesn't have an aggregation. So group by cluster, if I add now this query will work. So I'm for each cluster, I'm trying to get how many count I have. Now this is same query will also try to run in power BI. So now you can see the zeroth cluster is pretty big. Now that's the dominating cluster. Sometime it could be a um, challenge also, but right now we are learning these things. So it's good that we got some non homogeneous clusters. 
now we have to find out what has made these cluster that is another part of the job which we when we analyze the data we do it why this cluster now the model view you can see below there is an option for model view and right now we don't need any modeling because we have the single table we are working so i'm going to click on the new report on the top and i'll come to the new report and there i'll try to analyze it what i'm going to do is from this uh, clu6 file i'm going to bring clusters as cluster is number number it is by default going to do it as a sum so first of all i'll convert this visual into a table and then i'll click on the small arrow and i say don't summarize so uh, now it will group by so basically now i have converted it into a group by this is how we do it in power bi so power bi non aggregated columns or categorical columns are group by and if you, your column is already text it is by default group by you have to add aggregation if you want to count now what i need to do is i can again do the count of cluster or count of any of the column which is non blank so get that so i can bring in cluster again it's going to do sum again i'm going to click on the down arrow and going to say count so in this manner i'll get count now i can also bring in quantity and see how my quantities are stacked up into this one and also can bring in gross and check the sum of gross how it is stacked up now those who are watching continuously on the channel are aware you know what kind of numbers we have now i can save this report with a new name let's call it as k means analysis now we have run now the k means algorithm this is something which we wanted to do as a data science stuff so why don't you go ahead and try this out and do let me know what else you want me to consider in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you